Hi guys, today we're going to look at the eSIM providers GigSky and AIS sim to fly Both have awesome global data products, but today we're going to look at their Asia-Pacific roaming data products and see how they compare. So now let's take a look at the GigSky application. So you can download it from the App Store. The, on the first installation, there is a walkthrough and it will help you get set up. As you can see here, it has my location already there. Let's see what they have for the Asia Pacific plan. Basically, I see four different plans, a one day, 15 day, and 30 day plans. Right up here, we can see the 22 countries. Probably you can check back and these will change from time to time. So we'll have a look at the order summary for our 800 megabyte one day plan. Because I use the referral code, it is showing a $5 off coupon. The great thing about GigSky is that you do get that first $5 off by using the coupon. You see here, I already have my credit set up. I've already used that promo code and it is showing here. So let's just click buy plan. We see it's now charging the card and we'll follow the activation steps as they occur here next. So here again, they are telling us about the plan label. The reason for this is iPhones can have up to 10 different SIM card plans. So once you're at four five or six, you want to make sure that you're keeping track of them. So this is going to copy the name of the plan. We'll come over here. This is the screen that pops up. Now, when you're doing scanning from a QR code, you'd see this exact same screen. So it's basically now going through the eSIM process. Again, you do have to have an internet connection in order to add these cellular plan. These cannot be added without any kind of 4G, Wi-Fi, or tethered connection. All right, we got an okay prompt. There it is. We have successfully completed the plan purchase. So that is 800 megabytes for one day. The normal price is $10 after using the $5 coupon and ends up being $5 for the one day. So now let's go take a look at our settings. Let's give this the better, better label. Uh, and as we remember, we did save this already. Gig Sky Plan 4. So now we have the, the label name. So we have all the details of the cellular plan here. And if we go back, we can see the secondary GigSky plan is there and available. Okay, now let's do a quick speed test. I'm gonna pull up in this fast.com right through the browser. And let's see what it's giving us. Fast.com seems to be powered by Netflix. So we're looking at good 4G speeds here. Proper 4G is 42 Mbps and we're looking at 35. So that's not half bad. So now that we've run a few speed tests, I wanna quick take a look at our usage. And if we come inside here to the app, we can see that it's displayed very nicely for us and we can drill down and see a little more detail. So, we do see we have 131 megabytes remaining as well as 23 hours remaining. So that means out of our 800 megabyte package, we've used most of it and have 131 megabytes remaining. Now I've run a few speed tests, but iPhones also do a lot of background app loading and refreshing. And so that's probably what has used up a bulk of this data. So when you're using one of these plans, be very careful about what applications you have backing up in the background because you will go through the data quite fast. Now let's look at a comparison of the GigSky Asia Pacific plan and the eSIM Asian plan. Here we can see the countries that both are supported in. Both plans have support for Hong Kong, India, Japan, Macau, Malaysia, Singapore, South Korea, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, and Vietnam. GigSky does have countries that the eSIM the fly does not have. So you can see those here. Some of the notable ones that GigSky does not cover are Indonesia, Myanmar, Nepal, Philippines, and Laos. On the other side, uh, the sim to fly does not cover Pakistan, New Zealand, 
And for Thailand, the Sim to Fly does not give full coverage. They only give a nominal 500 megabytes for just short-term usage. Now let's take a look at the prices. If we look at the packages, eSIM's default package is $19, and that's gonna give eight days and five gigabytes. On the other side, the closest thing is you get a 30-day package for five gigabytes, which is $50. So that is quite a substantial difference. If you are using the eSIM after your first package is finished, it does get a lot cheaper. So we can see here, you can get two days with one gigabyte for $4. Obviously you pay in Thai bot, but the price in, in dollars is right around $4. Even the one day with the $5 coupon at $5 is still quite a bit more expensive. You're only getting 800 megabytes instead of a gigabyte. And here you're getting two days. You can see that the gig sky is substantially more expensive. The gig sky is a smartphone app, which is great. You can install it anywhere and make a payment nice and easy. The sim to fly currently can only be had as a QR code. And you can do that through various websites or in AIS shops, but only in Thailand. As far as getting a phone number, GigSky does not provide that. So additionally, they do not allow any sending and receiving of SMSs. But with a sim to fly you will get a Thailand phone number and you can make and receive calls if you wish and SMSs. You would need to add additional mobile phone credit in order to do that, but normally at least in Thailand, receiving of calls and SMSs is going to be free. Who wins? It does seem like if we're talking about price, 150% cheaper, you would definitely think that the sim to fly is a much better value. But if you are a business traveler and all you care about is speed of connectivity, low hassle, loading up data plans, and price is not really a concern for you, the simplicity of the GigSky app is quite amazing. There is no key press codes to introduce and you do see your usage right there inside the application. So quite a good value if you are traveling frequently and you're not too concerned about the price.